start off with uh, Chelsea today, actually. Uh, so Chelsea have been cleared of any allegations of wrongdoing surrounding the sale, surrounding the sale of their hotels that came in at 90 million euros. It's all now been officially cleared by the Premier League. And I think it's important to talk about that because we spoke about it when there was new media articles talking about it not being cleared and that it was wrong and that it was against the rules. I think it's equally as important to speak about it and say it has now been cleared by the Premier League, the valuation, the process. There's no issues with it. They've officially avoided any PSR problems. And I just wanted to get your reactions to that because Chelsea fans have got a lot of stick for the way Todd Bowley and Clear Lake have operated in that regard. I mean, uh, listen, when it comes to, to Chelsea, I will not change my mind because they haven't given us any reason to change our minds, whether it be on the pitch or off it, um, you know, and... Listen, selling, ho for me, listen, jokes aside, it's all about sustainability. It's all about what can you do in the long term to make you successful, to make you a dominant football club over a four, five, six year period. Not not necessarily win everything, but at least be there, be there and thereabouts, you know. And listen, here's, here's the thing. I think the new rules, whether it's regarding the European one or the other one, does not allow Chelsea to take care of these, to use these loopholes, if you would like. And for me, I look at, at, at Chelsea and at the end of the day, you're not going to sit up here and sell a hotel every single summer. It's just it's just this loophole, I, I do assume, will eventually be closed even by the Premier League. I think the PSR, from the European perspective, I think it, it has been closed. Um, so, like, they no longer can do that. So, they get a bit more in trouble with the UEFA and stuff like that. I do assume that the Premier League that will, will follow suit as well. But this is not a sustainable model to run. That's 100% not a sustainable model to run because at the end of the day, um, you just can't just keep selling hotels to run a football club. Uh, you have to run a football club a lot smarter. You have to run a football club a lot more uh, savvy. The Osman stuff proves it as well. I mean, when you go in for a world-class player like that, a top five in his position, top six in his position, whatever it is, regardless where you think he is, you're going to have to, you know, break a wage structure. You're going to have to do certain things. And... You look at Chelsea and it's just not sustainable. Can and I stop you here in a bit? Can I stop you here and just right. interject for a bit to see you can actually come in? But yeah. Chelsea don't have to do this every summer. They did this to spend that much money to build a team, in their opinion, a competitive team that needs time to gel and they are competing for the Premier League in the next three, four years. They don't have to do this unless you're suggesting that Chelsea will spend a billion every two, three years. No, you already that's have a thing. Hold on. Let me ask the question then. I did the statement. Let me ask the question. Unless you don't think that, that the Chelsea team is not good enough and they will need to spend the same amount of money next summer and the summer after. You're funny, Mo. You get what I'm coming from, right? You get what You're I'm funny. coming from. You know, there are two Chelsea, there are two Chelsea camps. There are there's a Chelsea camp. Skullex is in the chat. Skullex used to be one of the guys that used to call me out every stream. Like, oh my God, Hussam has a Chelsea agenda. And now he's like, yep, he's spitting. It's not sustainable. People are finally waking up now. And this relates to what's happening on the pitch. Just like I didn't blame Pochettino, I won't blame Maresca. I genuinely don't believe the Chelsea team is that good. How is that a crazy statement to make? I genuinely do not believe that this Chelsea team, as currently constructed, is as amazing as people make out. Cole Palmer. Fantastic signing. Caicedo, fantastic signing. Gusto, when fit, fantastic signing. The rest of the Chelsea squad, whether it be a fitness question or a consistency question or a performance question, there is a question mark over them all. Every single last bit of them. There's Chelsea fans who like Chilwell and then there's Chelsea fans who like Cucurella. There's Chelsea fans who want Disassi and Badia Shiele. There's Chelsea fans who want Colwell and Fofana. This is not, a, nothing I'm saying genuinely is not a single word I'm saying is actually agenda. When you look at this Chelsea side, a lot of them either have a fitness question to answer, meaning stay fit, be available, and all that type of stuff, or performances. Give you a prime example, Nicholas Jackson. Another prime example, Lonnie Madueke. That's the prime example of someone sometimes playing good, sometimes playing like crap. Look at Nicholas Jackson's performance versus City compared to Nicholas Jackson's performance in the last game. I know he got a lot of hate, but in the last game, he missed a chance. He scored a chance, 50%. That's good. That's a good enough ratio for a striker. But I'm saying overall, overall, Mo, when I look at this Chelsea squad, 
a lot of them there are question marks every single one of them and then you look at, at the direction that they're headed okay let's talk direction you go sign Jaden sancho طب, okay you have felix you have sancho you have nkunku who are all similar profiles palmer is that same profile but he's effective and actually good so all three are the same exact profiles that doesn't really help them out when we were doing straight facts during the summer i said chelsea need a robot that can score goals it doesn't matter about his first touch it doesn't matter about any of that and it was proven in the crystal palace game they just needed someone to score goals they just needed someone to put the ball in the back of the net and that's why i'm saying there are question marks over all of these players mo like colwell is a question mark fofana is a question mark badishil is a question mark disas is a question mark the goalkeeping situation has been horrendous when it comes to to, to chelsea strasbourg has a better goalkeeper than chelsea does Petrovic. so you're assuming that chelsea will spend will to 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 rectify this you're assuming that chelsea will yes have they have to spend again, again. 100% Here is what I agree with you. If your personal like understanding or personal prep for this Chelsea or your 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 opinion, your personal opinion of this Chelsea is not good enough, you're assuming that they have to spend another half a billion to rectify the mistakes that they did. And here, this is when I I understand your point. I don't I disagree with it. I think they have very good players. I think they bought good depth. Who are they? they them. Good team. I actually think Neto is a good investment. I actually right. think Jackson is not bad. They are one striker. I think Nkunku is mm -hmm. a good player. I think mm -hmm. Felix is a question mark, of course, because of his history of not performing and not delivering anything. Madweke, I think, is a good player. Cole Palmer, Caicedo, I think, is a good player. Lavia, Shrewsbury Hall, I can go on and on. I think Fofana is a good centre back. I think Kurul is a good centre back. But half of the ones you mentioned have fitness issues, and that was my mm -hmm. point. And that is a different story, Hussein. Having a fitness issue, you have Jota. You count your front line as Jota, Diaz, and Salah. The only one that doesn't have a question mark is Mohamed Salah. Does that mean your forward line is crap? It doesn't mean this. Because Cody Gakpo hasn't delivered. Luis Diaz you don't rate. Nunes you don't rate. Jota is always injured. And Chiesa is injury prone. Does that mean your front line is bad and you will need to spend our our front million? line without and also Mo hold on would be a, and would Muhammad be Salah, and Muhammad Salah is 32 years old I know he's on top of his game you can't question but you have to understand from Chelsea's point of view they have a lot of technical and talented footballers that is why they are covering the injuries Malugusto covers Rhys James Kukuria but Gusto is now injured as an example but Rhys James is back no, Rhys James is not back. Actually, it was reported yesterday that he's going to miss the next game. Go go read it right now. Mo, that's the thing. When I was talking, I'm not talking about quality. I said the question marks come some over consistency and some over injury proneness. Now, that's what I was saying. Maneto is injury prone. Yeah. Neto's injury prone. Gusto's injury prone. There's They have a lot of players. Fofana, who's been playing well this season, is also injury prone. The goalkeeping situation hasn't been sorted. Yani, are you telling me injury from prone. after the end of the Fofana's season? Not injury. Fofana's not injury prone. He has back-to-back ACLs. If he gets okay. another ACL, Mo, it's going to be a question. Are you telling me right now yes. Sanchez this season is not going to cost Chelsea minimum another 10 points, 15 no, points? No, he will. Uh, but but that's okay, what I mean. that's, well, that could be top four costly then. Yeah, but, but that's not half a billion pounds. That's but just that, a goalkeeper. Once again, you're missing the point. If they miss out on top four this season, now with the hotel loophole closed, they actually are in trouble. No clickbait, no nothing. This is real shit. I am not a financial advisor. I don't know that. I watch yeah, Terry yeah. sometimes. He breaks down the wages. You assume this. You don't know, bro. You don't I'm know. I'm assuming nothing. Do you know what I would say? Just, just it's great listening to the two of you. I, I would say this. I think there's 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 an element of truth to both sides here. And again, I'm gonna. I'm not sitting on the fence. Chelsea's model. No, but it's true. Chelsea's model is so different. Nobody has ever done what Chelsea have attempted to do before. It's it's innovative. Uh, and innovation doesn't always lead to positive results, but equally it can lead to a new frontier. They have essentially, in three summers, in the three summers of their rebuild, spent almost all their money that they could conceivably spend on players. They are sailing close to the PSR wind. They have to start getting it right now. They have to start getting back into the major European competitions and winning. Those wins lead to more money from endorsements, more prize money, etc. That means their revenue grows, and it means they're able to, one, pay off the transfer fees of all the previous transfers that are spread over seven or eight years, and it means they can continue to invest in the squad to move forward. However, if it goes wrong and they foul this season, so if Maresca turns out not to be right, 
if they get mad injuries again. And I do where I agree with Hussam is availability and ability should be discussed in the same in the same breath because yes, although you sign five or six quality players, if it goes wrong and they're all out injured and Chelsea end up finishing seventh and they're back in the conference league again, that is when Chelsea may find themselves in in, in trouble because the expensive players have lost value. And yes, they might be able to sell, say Enzo Fernandez gets sold for 50 million. They're still paying off the, the, the hundred odd million they owe on him for the next five or six years. That starts to build up and create an issue. However, what is really good about Chelsea's model is you've just seen, and I'm, I don't remember his name. There's a player they sold yesterday or today who they got 19 million pound for. He was out alone at uh, Strasbourg last season. They've just made a 6 million pound profit. What, it was, was it Washington or it was, that was Gabriel something? Gabriel something is his name. Angelo Gabriel, yes. Gabriel, Angelo Gabriel. Gabriel. So I think they bought, they've made, they sold him for 19 million. They, they bought him for around 12 million, 13 million. So they've made a profit on that player. And this is one thing where I get a lot of stick from Chelsea fans that you're always honest. No, I've, I've said lots of positive things about your model and I've defended areas that aren't true. Of the 1.5 billion spent, I've always felt that a good third of it has been spent on players they have no intention of ever playing. They want to do what they've done with that Angelo kid. So if you take, say, £400 million worth of players, maybe even £500 million you could go as high as, and you add, what's the percentage on, on, on that deal? So just, I, I'm not very good at uh, percentages. I'll look at my calculator. So 19 divided by 13, you're talking about an increase of around 46%. Okay, so I think that's about right, plus 46%. Yeah, about an increase of 46%. So let's just take 400 million pounds of a play. If they sell them all on at a similar rate, okay, if you add 46% to that, you're talking about them making a profit on those players of 184 million, and it would generate an income of 584 million pounds. So this is the one thing I'd say about Chelsea's business model. I, I Sometimes you've got to look, they, if they generate that in, there'll be profit in that of about 184 million pounds. But remember, profit can be spread over a five, six year period. So raising 100, 180 million pounds in one, over a couple of years in sales, you could theoretically spend that on 600, 700 million pounds of more talent. So I've been very for, I mean, Chez always gives me crap and Don's always giving me crap about this, but I stand by it. The only thing that scarpers this plan, and I'm talking about not just the team on the pitch, but puts them in financial trouble long term is if this team in the next two seasons doesn't succeed and yes. if they can't and if they can't sell these players on so th there's always that possibility not as well they don't finish they, up for this season then well I, st I still think they'll be able to sell a number of these players they've recently bought i still think they could raise enough money and i still think they'd have enough income through that to avoid psr issues the problem is if they miss out say on champions league the next two years Say they don't get as many sales for these players as they want, if that part of their model doesn't work, then they could find themselves because they've had to sell nearly 100 million euros worth of assets. They've sold the women's team back to them. That's when they could find themselves in a situation whereby they may find themselves facing points deductions via the PSR problem. So I wouldn't say that Chelsea's financial issues are resolved yet, but the financial issues have only really been caused by spending heavy in the first three years. And it's about that model coming through. It's it's a really interesting scenario at Chelsea. Unlike everybody else's teams, where it's almost the big teams I'm talking, where it's, oh, that didn't work. Do you know what? Sell a couple of players. Have a year where you don't really spend as much money. The following year, you'll be able to spend again. Chelsea's is almost, if they don't get success and they can't sell a lot of these assets on, they could go through years of financial difficulty, making it hard to build a team that could win Premier Leagues again. However, if they kick on this year and get fourth. Some of these young players, the Enzos, the Caicedos, turn into the stars they expect. They are then going to they're then going to spend even more and add it to this team. And as long as that revenue keeps growing, they're never going to have an issue. And I think getting this um, clear today by the Premier League surrounding the um, the hotels, I think, was key.